Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Monsef, and thank you for this uh, kind invitation. Um, I would like to, to start from our brilliant previous uh, uh, review of uh, post-integrative latency of HIV uh, to stress the fact that how important it is in the integration side for HIV latency and how much important is it the chromatin situation at the level of the integration side. But I want to extend this concept a little bit further. I would like to uh, try to uh, convince you that it's important not only the, the chromatin at the integration side, but also the uh, position of the provirus within the cell nucleus. Uh, so, yes. So if you, if you think about the nucleus, you see here is a, is a picture showing a, a standard nucleus, a cartoon, and you must imagine that the nucleus is not a, only a bag of molecules, it's actually highly organized. It's organized in compartments which are not divided by membranes. These are compartments which are functional compartments. Of course, you all know the nucleoli, but you have also other kind of compartments. You have heterochromatin and euchromatin. You have PML bodies, you have uh, speckles and so on. So all this, all this organization of the nucleus impacts the functions of the uh, pathways that are occurring in the nucleus, including transcription. So one of the uh, first observations we, we took was uh, we, we um, look at the uh, provirus of a series of uh, cell lines, some of them from uh, Eric's uh, group, some of them we produce ourselves, and we looked at the position of the provirus in silent cells with respect to the cell, uh, to the cell nucleus. And we, all, we measured the distance between the uh, provirus and the periphery of the nucleus. As you can see here, the distance between all these proviruses in these cell lines is very close to the nuclear periphery. And this was quite peculiar because the nuclear periphery is quite well known to be uh, a repressive compartment. So if you look at the markers of uh, repression like alpha satellite uh, probes, you can see that they, they stain quite heavily the periphery of the nucleus in jerkat cells. Or if you take a markers for, hetero, for heterochromatin as well, you can see um, uh, uh, clustering at the nuclear periphery. So we were curious to understand how this impact the uh, uh, latency of the HIV provirus, and uh, particularly because the uh, HIV has to reactivate from latency. So this cannot be a compartment of uh, complete repression, must be a compartment that is able to be reactivated. So we took one of these cell lines, the JLAT A1, and we further characterized the chromatin at the site of integration, but not at the site of integration, but the surrounding chromatin. So what is the environment of the uh, provirus? So we undertook this analysis by a 4C approach, is a, which is a circular chromatin conformation capture. So we surveyed the uh, chromatin by cross-linking it and sequences, sequencing fragments of chromatin associated with the provirus during latency and during activation. And by doing this, uh, this analysis in this particular cell line, we found that uh, the uh, provirus was associated uh, closely in trans with a pericentromeric, pericentromeric region of chromosome 12. So this is a single cell line, this is a single example. It was known that uh, the integration site of this particular cell line was within uh, uh, an intergenic region, so there's 15% of the intergenic region that was shown before. But uh, here we propose that actually the uh, repression is in trans and it comes from the heterochromatin at the site of uh, pericentromeric heterochromatin of uh, chromosome 12. So then we looked at the, by, uh, by fish, at the localization of chromosome 12 with respect to the provirus, and you can see here that one of the two chromosomes is actually associated with the provirus at the nuclear periphery. But the situation is a little bit more complex than this. So if you uh, take the clonal population and you look at the association of chromosome 12, pericentromeric heterochromatin, uh, pericentromeric region with the provirus, you can see that um, let's say uh, uh, around 10% is associated with the, with the provirus during latency, and the rest is not associated closely with the provirus. However, uh, uh, when you um, activate with a, a formal ester, for example, where you have 90% uh, of cells which have been activated in this, uh, during this treatment, you can see that this population is completely uh, all uh, dissociated from chromosome 12. And also you can see this by uh, the 3C approach, which is, uh, uh, again, a measure of the close interaction with this uh, region in trans. And you can see that in addition of, uh, of uh, TPA completely re uh, reduces the association with the, uh, the provirus. So uh, and it's not the situation in the, in the cell line, it's not homogeneous, although it's clonal. You, you have only as the association in a certain proportion of these cells. 
but uh, what happens to the localization of the provirus? So again, uh, as I showed you before, in situations where there's uh, latency, all the proviruses are associated with uh, uh, the uh, periphery of the nucleus. As you can see this in one example. However, when you we add TPA, you would have expect a shift from the periphery towards the interior, but in the fact, this was not significant relevance. So still, the provirus is present at the periphery of the nucleus. So apparently, uh, although these uh, virus is competent for transcription, it doesn't actually uh, move from a repressive compartment. Uh, we uh, extended this analysis to another cell line uh, that we produced, and we look at the RNA, so we look at the position of the provirus, of the DNA and the RNA, and again, uh, uh, when the RNA, just in, the, in, the, in the constant activation, you can see that uh, the association with the periphery is still very close. So again, in a different cell line, a different setting, you still have uh, association with the nuclear periphery. Uh, this uh, cell line has uh, uh, an adva uh, several advantages because we engineered within the, uh, uh, within the uh, provirus the binding site for the MS2 protein, which is a known uh, bacteriophage protein used for tagging RNA, and this can be actually uh, visualized by GFP tagging. So the idea is that uh, the RNA which is produced by the virus can be visualized in living cells. And so we can actually measure and observe transcription uh, in, in, in live cells. So this was important to understand if transcription was occurring at the nuclear periphery. So because you can measure uh, in, in a fixed sample what happens in a particular moment, but you have to follow what happens during time to be sure that transcription is always at the nuclear periphery. So this is an example. So this is take, these are uh, frame shots taken every, every uh, five minutes. And you can see that transcription, which is this bright spot here at the periphery of the nucleus, this is the single integration site of HIV transcribing, so in, in a living cell. And you can see that actually doesn't uh, change its position with respect to the nuclear periphery. So you have to imagine that this, actually, this virus is transcribing actively at the nuclear periphery in an environment which is uh, actually repressive. Uh, we uh, further on, uh, analyzed these, uh, these cell lines and used them to try to understand how was the kinetic of uh, HIV transcription, so actually how the polymerase was active on, on this, uh, um, uh, on this uh, uh, template. And so we, uh, first we, we observed that actually the, the, the intensity of the, of the RNA, so uh, the RNA which is produced at steady state at this integration site is constant in time, so there are no bursts and blips or uh, discontinuous transcription that has been observed in other uh, situations, but I must say that here you have an excess of the transactivator. And then we used a, a, a FRAP approach, which I hope it works, because the movies don't. Okay, so this is a living cell, this is a transcription site. You can actually bleach the uh, fluorescent at the transcription site and look at the recovery. So this is a, co is a technique used to measure kinetic of factors within the cell nucleus. And we have applied this technique to look at the transcription. So in simple terms, the recovery at that site is strictly dependent on the, um, uh, on the kinetic of the polymerase. So the, 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 the fact that you see a bright spot here means that you have R HIV RNA with the binding sites for the polymerase which are produced at that site. And so you can use the technique, and so we observe that this, the recovery, as shown here, is quite, is quite fast. So in, within seconds, we have full recovery of the fluorescent at the spot, and this happens in, in various cell lines. These are all cell lines that we selected very similarly to uh, uh, Albert and Eric's uh, way of selecting them, uh, and these are uh, with different integration sites. So they are all integrated in different uh, genes, actually. And you can see that uh, recovery was very similar for all of these cell clones. And finally, uh, we, we were able to measure the kinetic of the polymerase by uh, modeling the FRAP recovery curves. And actually, the um, transcription uh, speed exceeds what has been proposed so far for cellular genes. So it appears to be a gene. So uh, uh, the viral gene is able to transcribe it very efficiently, so uh, 20 to 50 times more efficient than uh, what has been measured for other genes, but with different techniques, so we have to compare directly to be sure. Uh, to conclude, uh, I would like to put on this cartoon that tells you that uh, in a, uh, we have shown that uh, um, the, the transcription of the provirus is, is peripheric and remains peripheric both in, in active and inactive states, 
and that uh, in, a cell, in, a, in, a, in a cell clone, you can have uh, both uh, refreshing through entranced by present through medical heterochromatin and uh, other kinds of repression in the same cell clone, which are the off state. And then when you activate, you have the formation of a very efficient uh, transcription complex that is able to carry on transcription. So I conclude by thanking <coughs> my collaborators and particularly Carolina, Paolo, and Anna who were involved in this work. And thank you for your attention. I still don't know how you know that it's not just an elongation block, that polymerase is already there and just needs to have P to B or TET. How do you know that this is repressed chromatin? How do you know that this? This is not just a lack of TET, P to B, elongation, because once it, everything happens so fast after you activate, and it goes extremely fast through something that's supposed to be repressive. Yeah, well, what, what we, we are measuring for with the FRAP is a steady state, so you already have an excess of TET, and you measure directly elongation at steady state. So the polymerase are already engaged and uh, already transcribing. So it's not ab initio, so it's not after stimulus that you measure what happens after stimulation and then up to steady states, but it's what is actually measuring at the steady state. Okay, the polymerase is there or not. It depends how you measure it, because at the single cell level, uh, you, um, you have to correlate at single cell level and the RNA level. So uh, it, it is, in, in the population, it's heterogeneous. So some part of the population, the polymerase is already there, but it's told, and some part is not. You know what I mean? Okay. Is there another question? No. So now if you just take cell, you infect them, and you isolate some Latently infected cells. How many of these cells will have HIV in the periphery or at the So we are doing experiments now on primary cells that should be sure what's the situation. And also in a polychronic population, you have, and uh, I don't have numbers so far, but you can see peripheric localization of the provirus. So it could be uh, a, a mechanism of the virus. It, ha it enters to the pore, it encounters chromatin at the pore, and lands there. So uh, this is important because it restricts the site of integration to a certain region of the nucleus. So that's what we are going to, to test now. So if actually the environment for, 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 for HIV integration is restricted also by the position of the provirus, and if this is relevant to, to the latency. Okay. Uh, there is a question there, Melanie. Uh, so, okay, for... Um, for the, for the JLAT A1, we use PHA, and I think we also use TNF. But, uh, and for the um, host cells, we transfect that, that they were in excess of that, yes. But we didn't do a survey uh, more consistent. These are just for the cell lines. <laughs>